Wednesday slate and MLB DFS is one where I think there is a decent shot that my process differs from what you want to do for today. And that's because I want to play things on the risky side. I prefer to play in tournaments, which means I can take on risk. I can utilize pitchers who may not have the safest projection because they're in really tough matchups. My favorite guys for tonight are in very difficult spots. You could go with Nestor Cortez, who has a really... He's a really good pitcher. He's in a decent spot. You can go that way. I think I want to live a bit more dangerously. And it's okay if you disagree. If you don't want to go the same route that I want to go. But I think with the way I want to play things, it does make a lot of sense to take some risk for tonight, use pitchers in very difficult matchups, and hope we hit it right and hope that everyone else deviates elsewhere. So let's break things down so you can make the best decision for you and the way you want to play for tonight. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to preview Wednesday's nine game main slate with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Couple weather notes. Both of them are related to hitting weather and it's good hitting weather. In St. Louis for the Pirates and the Cardinals, it is 95 degrees and winds are out to left at 12 miles per hour. That is a boost for hitters for Pirates and the Cardinals. At Wrigley Field, once again, another great spot for hitting. It is 88 degrees and winds are out to center at 17 miles per hour. It's basically Coors Field for tonight. So, Bump up Wrigley, bump up St. Louis. We're going to talk about the Padres and the Cubs in the stacking section because it is a fantastic place to get some bats for today. We'll get to that in just a bit, but first a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. As always, we have our PGA DFS podcast up there previewing this week's U.S. Open myself and Brandon Gadula. You can find that by searching for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. The, the golf's third major championship is set for this Thursday, and FanDuel and Callaway Apparel are bringing you a free daily fantasy contest that gives you a chance to win a share of $20,000. Introducing the Callaway Apparel Major Style Contest, a free-to-play daily fantasy contest that gives you the chance to make this weekend's U.S. Open even more exciting than it already is. All you have to do is draft your best roster of six golfers while staying under the $60,000 salary cap and follow along using FanDuel's live scoring as the U.S. Open unfolds. If you've scored the highest at the end of the tournament, you'll walk away with the $5,000 first place prize. Visit FanDuel.com slash league slash Callaway Apparel. FanDuel.com slash league slash Callaway Apparel to enter and submit your lineups today. Again, always take free lineups to give them to you. You should check that one out for sure. FanDuel.com slash league slash Callaway Apparel. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate. Shane, Shane McClanahan. Facing the Yankees is the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel, checking in at $11,400. Corbin Burns is 10-9. Nestor Cortez is 10-5. Tyler Anderson checks in at $9,500 with Jose Barrios, Jack Flaherty coming off the IL, and Rosie Contreras as the others at $8,000 or higher. One note on Jack Flaherty, I'd expect around 75 or so pitches for today. I know the reports were 60. I think 75 is more likely because he went 59 in his final rehab start, so... If you're looking at Flaherty, expect around 75 or so pitches. Now, the tough thing here is the top two guys in salary are McClanahan and Burns, and it's a rough spot for them. McClanahan facing the Yankees, Burns facing the Mets, and neither team is a matchup I want to target all that often in DFS. So it's tough, but they are going to be my top two guys for tonight. We'll talk about Nestor Cortez and things to watch, because for cash games, I do think he should be your choice there. The reason I like McClanahan and Burns, strikeout upside. McClanahan facing the Yankees in the road, but it's all about McClanahan here. I hate the matchup. The Yankees' active roster has a 120 WRC plus against lefties with tons of power. I don't want to use pitchers against them, but McClanahan is a disgusting pitcher. He threw a lot of curves in his first three starts. He hasn't done as much since. Uh, So I'm going to go toss out those three starts and look at him from that point on. In the past nine starts, McClanahan has been otherworldly, a 2.26 skill interactive ERA, 34% strikeout rate, and a 4% walk rate, all of which are very good numbers. But if you're going to face the Yankees in New York, you need great batted ball data to excel. 
McClanahan has that. He has a 32% hard hit rate with a 33% fly ball rate, so he checks every box. Plus, they're letting him go deeper in games now than they were earlier on this year because McClanahan has gone 90 plus pitches in six straight games. He had one seven, or he's had seven plus strikeouts in all those games, and he had nine plus in three out of the six. One of those starts was against the Yankees. He had six innings, seven strikeouts, one run allowed. That one was at home. He's on the road now, but I think there is enough here and there's enough in McClanahan to get the job done. So I'll be high on him in this spot, despite the fact it is very, very risky. If you're risk averse, you're not going to like McClanahan. You're not going to like Corbin Burns. And I totally understand. I get it for sure. Uh, I respect that process. But for me personally, I want to win big if I win. And I think that McClanahan and Burns give me the best chance to do so. Let's talk about Burns. He is not facing as powerful of a team with the Mets, but they're still a very good team. And I, I, again, think that he's well worth consideration here. The Mets have a 127 WRC plus against righties. That is the second highest on the slate. It's also a super low strikeout rate at 19%, which is a buzzkill. Um, but I still have Burns projected for 7.3 strikeouts here, which ranks second on the slate behind just McClanahan, who is at 8.5. It's because of how well Burns has been pitching. For the full season, he has a three or 2.73 skill interactive ERA. His strikeout rate is 32%. The bat at ball data for Burns is not as pristine as it was last year, and that's one source of concern, but it hasn't mattered yet. His ERA, 2.48, it was 2.43 last year. We saw Burns face another good low strikeout team against righties on the road a couple starts ago. That was against the Cardinals. They're a good low strikeout team. But Burns had 11 strikeouts across seven shutout innings. He has upside. And yeah, he's had some clunkers recently, but he has a path, an obvious path, a path he has shown to getting you 50, 60 FanDuel points. And I want that upside. So there are blemishes for Burns for sure, but he will still be high on my list. And I'd put him above Cortez for tournaments. Cortez is the cash game play. And again, we'll talk about him later on. But for tournaments, give me McClanahan, give me Burns under the hope slash assumption that the matchups drive a lot of people away from using them for tonight. For the value play, it's actually one I like a lot. And I will talk here on the show a lot about how I may not use the value play because I prefer to stick to the studs. For today, I will use that guy. And that guy is Spencer Strider at $7,500. I've been skeptical of Strider in his move to the rotation. I actually bet the under on his strikeout prop last week, and he made me look very stupid but the reasons I was skeptical have shifted. So I am in on him this time. I was wondering if the Braves would let Strider up his pitch count, and they did. He has now gone 72, 87, and 92 pitches. 92 is enough for $7,500. And while Strider's gotten stretched out, he has kept the quality rate stats. His strikeout rate in this turn in the rotation is 33%. Hard hit rate is 28%. He is still walking too many guys, and it does make his pitch efficiency worse, but it hasn't mattered too much yet because we saw Strider get eight strikeouts last time. He had seven on just 72 pitches in his first start in this stint. So he's keeping it up so far. Based on the Nationals here, they are a low strikeout team, a 20% strikeout rate against righties, but I still have Strider projected for 7.2 strikeouts today, and that's almost the same number as Burns and just behind the clan end. It's actually ahead of Nestor Cortez. So... I'm still not fully convinced that Strider keeps us up. We could see some regression at some point. It's hard to stretch out to be a starter. But for $7,500, I don't need to be fully convinced. There is a lot of room for error at the top of this player pool between Cortez, maybe not getting a ton of strikeouts, between McClanahan and Burns and really tough spots. I can afford to take a swipe, and I'm okay taking that swipe with Spencer Strider. So to me, he is a very worthy value play at $7,500 and someone I will definitely have in my player pool for tonight. So to me, for tournaments, I want McClanahan, Burns, and Strider. For cash games, Nestor Cortez. And again, thoughts on him coming up later on. First, though, let's talk about stacks. Which means we have to start things out at Wrigley Field. It is hot temperatures, the winds are out, and the Cubs are in a good matchup. So I will stack the Padres, too. Caleb Killian, who they're facing, is a ground ball guy. So more of a secondary option for me. But the Cubs, probably above even Coors Field for today for me. They're facing Ryan Weathers, who's getting called up from AAA for the first time this year. He really has struggled down there. His ERA is 7.29. XFIP is 6.49. He hasn't had strikeouts. He has had minimal ground balls. So I'm a bit surprised he's back. 
guessing it's probably because they just needed a guy who was on the 40 man. But now Weathers has to come up and face the Cubs after struggling in AAA. And the wins are working against him. So it's just a really tough spot for Weathers. Even though the Cubs will be chalky today, I think it's for very good reason. My hope is that by being a bit different a pitcher, I can allow myself to stack the Cubs, stack Coors Field, and still be okay with that. So I'm going to put the Cubs actually above Coors Field for today, and I don't feel that bad about doing so. So to me, the Cubs are the number one stack on the main slate for tonight. As we saw last night, Wilson Contreras can obliterate lefties. Uh, double dong for him there. No pushback on Contreras. 10 out of 10 would use. The guy who might get the biggest boost against the lefty is Frank Schwindel. He has a career 248 ISO against lefties. His ISO against righties is 186. Strikeout rate is also lower with the platoon advantage. He's $2,500. If you use Schwindel, easy for me to say, with Contreras, it does force you to burn your utility slot, but I think that's the right play here. So to me, Definitely going Schwindel and Contreras. Um, could get a little bit dicey, given that I want to use CJ Crone too, but I do think that uh, using two of those three guys in most lines is going to be a good way to play things for today. So the Cubs my number one stack. Well, let's talk about the Rockies as my number two stack, and we'll talk about the, the Guardians as my number three stack. So it is all Wrigley or Coors in the top three slots for today. The Rockies facing Connor Pilkington. We're up to a fourth start sample on Pilkington, and he's getting some strikeouts, but they've mostly been against bad teams, and I'm not sure they will necessarily stick. The swinging strike rate for, for Pilkington in AAA was 12% with a, an 18% strikeout rate. He's at 13% and 24% in the big leagues, and he could keep that up, but it also could come down. And if it comes down, the batted ball numbers could be a bit red flaggy because he has a 41% fly ball rate, and that's led to some bumps in the road for him so far. He's led up three plus earned runs twice. He led up four last time out. And that was at home against the A's. Now you're taking Pilkington and putting him on the road against the Rockies. They're not bad against lefties. Don't strike out that much. Got a 104 WRC plus, And I think they're good enough to take advantage here. So the Rockies to me, very deserving of being our number two stack. Now the fun thing with the Rockies is the salaries are pretty low. If you look at them like, you got Crone. He is, I believe, $3,900. Uh, he is, yeah, $39. But then every other righty is $3,200 or lower, which means I don't think we need to get too weird with our right-handed batters on this team. And it allows me to be a bit skeptical of Randall Gritchick. He's probably going to bat fourth, fifth, sixth, somewhere in there, probably sixth. But he's hitting terribly right now. Uh, Gritchick has a 29% strikeout rate in June with a 23% hard hit rate. He hasn't had a barrel since May 17th. So it's a good spot, and he's a value play. We know he's got long-term power, uh, but like, I'm not going to put him crazy high on my list relative to Connor Joe, Brendan Rogers, CJ Crone, guys like that. I'd rather rank them high. I'll get to Gritchick because it's Coors, because he's $2,800, but not the highest priority right on this team, despite the fact he is the lowest salaried and does come with a lot of name value. As mentioned, I think Cleveland is great too. They're in this game facing Austin Gomber, and we've talked about it a couple times this year, but Gomber is not where he was last year. He's been scaling back on his slider across his past seven starts. I'm not sure if it's, you know, pitch mix changes or just injury or what, whatever it may be, but it hasn't been a good change so far. His strikeout rate is down to 16% with a 42% hard hit rate. The five ball rate's still pretty okay at 33%, but it's not good enough to overcome the rest of what's ailing him in his profile. ERA for Gomber is 7.47. Some of that came on the road even. His most recent home start was against the Braves, and he let up nine earned runs in that one. The Braves are a much better team than Cleveland, so better matchup for Gomber today. But Cleveland, um, I, I, I prefer them against a righty, but they're at Coors Field, 89 degrees. I think they got a good matchup, so I think – there is enough here to overcome their deficiencies tonight. I would prefer Cleveland against the righty, and they're not as good as the Braves, but do still think they're a solid option for today. So Cleveland, once again, very high on my list. Talked a lot about Oscar Gonzalez yesterday. Only three FanDuel points. It didn't work out there, but I still think he's an elite option once again for today. I think Ahmed Rosario is interesting despite a lack of power. He does put the ball in the air against lefties, which gives him a chance at some uh, dingers. 33% fly ball rate. He can swipe bags. I think he's fast enough to do that even against the lefty. And with all that expansive outfield at Coors Field, the speed for Rosario can play up more. So 
Gonzalez, my top priority among the values. Obviously, Jose Ramirez is number one, but among the values, Gonzalez won. I think that Rosario, Miles Straw, uh, same line of thought, both benefit from facing a lefty. So Cleveland's a bit different of a stack, and uh, I definitely prefer the Rockies to them, but both these options are good given the weather at Coors Field for today. So Cubs one, Rockies two, Guardians three, the ranking of the stacks for today. Let's get to things to watch and talk about Nestor Cortez. I think he is probably your cash game pitcher for today. He's at home against the Rays. They're a decent team against lefties, but not a powerful one. Uh, they're also a low strikeout team. And that's why I'm not here for tournaments, but for cash games, Cortez is a quality pitcher at home against a team that's probably not going to take him yard. So I like him a lot for cash. I just like the other three more for tournaments. So Cortez probably going to get you seven innings, one or two earned runs. Five strikeouts. That's not bad from a pitching perspective for today. So if you want to take the safe route, go Cortez. I probably will get there personally too and use him along with um, Burns, McClanahan, and uh, Strider. But I just want to have more of those guys. I think their upside is better for today. I initially had the Blue Jays in my top three stacks, but then Ryan, I thought it was Joe Musgrove who was going to start for the Padres. So I was like, okay, can be a little bit lower on the Cubs. But then it's Ryan Weathers, uh, the Wrigley weather being what it was bump the Jays out of the top three. But I still think they're an elite stack. They're facing Bruce Zimmerman. He's cooled down massively from his hot start. The the Jays have a lot of righties who can bang lefties. So they're a great stack. They would be top three, maybe top one on a lot of other slates. Uh, but for today, they're, they're number four, but a really respectable number four, the team I do want to stack. Same thing is true for the Red Sox. Again, it would be a, a top three stack on a lot of slates. Facing James Caprellian, he's letting up a lot of fly balls and hard contact while not getting a lot of strikeouts. That is a great recipe for upside on the opposing side. I think the Jays are pretty comfortably ahead of the Red Sox. So the Jays four, Red Sox five, but the Red Sox, not bad by any means. On a lot of slates, the Jays could be the top stack. I think the Red Sox are more of like a two or three on a lot of slates. Just a, a good slate for stacking overall for tonight. Didn't talk about some other teams that I think are viable too. Um, like the Dodgers against three Detmers. I could definitely see myself stacking there. Wouldn't object to that. Um, they're probably the primary one as far as other ones. So check out the Dodgers too if you want a the sixth stack. Uh, but overall, it's a really good facility for stacking for today. Let's finish up with some dinger calls for tonight. The boring one, I will go to Wrigley Field and check out Patrick Wisdom. Uh, he's got a 250 or so ISO against lefties so far this year. Hitting the ball well overall in the middle of that lineup, facing with Weathers, uh, who has really struggled so far in AAA. So Patrick Wisdom. The boring home run call for today. The fun one, I'm going back to where we were a couple nights ago, Teoscar Hernandez. Um, I think the homers will come soon. He didn't hit a dinger when we talked about him a couple nights ago, but I think he had three hard hit balls in that game uh, with an exit velocity of 95 plus miles per hour. So they're going to come soon, the dingers, I would assume. Um, only three so far this year, but I think I think we're going to see an eruption here in the very near future. So the home run calls for today, Patrick Wisdom and Teoscar Hernandez. That is all that we got here for today on the solo shot. As mentioned that we do have our PGA DFS breakdown already posted up on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Search for that wherever you get your podcasts. Take a listen to myself and Brandon. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review. Also, I have Brandon on covering the spread to break down the betting sides of the U.S. Open, too. Just search for covering the spread in your podcast feed there. If you've got questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again on Thursday for another slate of MLB DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.